friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is an intumescent cataract with a very hard nucleus let us observe this surgery this is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome and now two side ports are made in this case this is a side port on the left side of the main incision about two and a half clock hours away and this is another side port on the right side of the main incision about three and a half clock hours away and now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber beneath this air bubble tripant blue 0 0.06 percent dye is applied over the anterior capsule of this white cataract after 10 seconds the dye is washed out with BSS and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is used as OBD and here it goes SPMC is injected into the anterior chamber and the air bubble is replaced by the SPMC. SPMC is applied over the cornea and this improves visibility. And now with the help of a 26 gauge bent needle, a C flap is made in this way. Make an incision and turn and the C flap is made. And now with the help of a uh, uterator forceps, a small rexis is made at this time. No attempt is made to do a large adequate sized rexis at this time. Capsular rexis is done as mini rexis is done. And now a 23 gauze Simco cannula is taken and aspiration of cortical lens matter is carried out. In this case, I have spent a lot of time in aspirating the cortical lens matter. Trying to rotate the nucleus by the Simco itself and here it is, it rotates and a lot of cortex from periphery and from behind the nucleus comes along the equator anteriorly and this is anticlockwise rotation and big chunks of cortical lens matter is coming out. Once this is done, once the capsular bag is decompressed in this way there will be no tendency of the capsule to run to periphery. The intumescence of the cataract is destroyed and capsulorexis, that means enlargement of this small rexis will be very easy. Visco is injected, SPMC is injected, a vana scissor is taken a small tangential nick is made at the margin of the rexis at around 8 o'clock. The uterata is taken again. The capsular tag is held and with anticlockwise movement, a large adequate sized rexis is made. You can see that the nucleus is big and hard. So I'm trying to do a rexis of about 5.75 millimeter and it is done. And now this hard nucleus is to be divided into some fragments and the technique I'm employing is submarine chop 
Here some superficial cortical lens matter is removed, the handpiece is turned, bevel is off, the nucleus is pushed little down and the tip is buried just in front of the main wound. It goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator, crosses the hard central core, reaches near the opposite equator and then the chopper is used to divide the nucleus into two heminuclei. And now each heminucleus is further subdivided into smaller parts. In this case this heminucleus has been divided into three fragments. The central fragment is emulsified and now I'm trying to divide the other heminucleus first. Fecco power being used is 70 percent. Flow rate is 40 ml per minute. Vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury. And now each nuclear fragment is being emulsified. The antechamber is very stable but the behavior of the post capsule is noted. And this is the last nuclear fragment. After emulsifying half of this last fragment, here I come down to FECO on mode where the vacuum is only 80 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 25 and ultrasonic energy used is 60 percent. The nucleus is conquered, small nuclear pieces come out through the side port. And now 2 percent SPMC is injected again and then 23 gauge Simco cannula is used to aspirate some remaining cortical lens matter. Very little cortex is remaining in this case. A thin sheet of cells is there at 7 o'clock over the posterior capsule. And now I ask for bimanual irrigation aspiration. Use the bimanual irrigation aspiration for removal of the sub incisional cortex. Cortex from 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is removed. And then I go to IA2 mode where the vacuum is less and remove some cells from the posterior capsule. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens in the capsular bag. After enlarging the main wound a little bit, I implanted this hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens in the capsular bag. The eye well is dialed by the irrigating probe itself. Advantage is whatever visco or stair in the lumen of the cartridge comes out if we use the irrigating probe for dialing. To prevent post off rise of intraocular pressure going to retained viscoelastic substance, we must remove the viscoelastic substance thoroughly. And it is done. And now the side ports are to be closed. This is moxifloxacin. Some moxifloxacin is injected into the antechamber. And then the corneal stroma on either side of the sideboards 
are hydrated and these stab wounds get closed. And then this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time a gentle stream of BSS is directed towards the corneal endothelium and whatever visco sticks to the corneal endothelium comes out at this time. And the anterior chamber is nicely formed. Integrity of all the wounds are checked with a cotton tipped Janssen bud. There should not be any leakage of BSS from any wound few drops of moxie is applied and the case is concluded. We started from here and we have reached to this point. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon. Serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence. Surgery is a combination of science and art. Put your heart 100% into surgery.